Rick joins us in to, uh, for what has turned into a most weekly visit. Most weeks, he joins us at Mostly. some point along the way, maybe every other week. Always good to catch up, my friend. It was good to see you in uh, in Oxford on Thursday night for game one of Mississippi State and Ole Miss. It was hard to believe that it, it had been almost 10 years since uh, you'd been back to Mississippi for a game. That's true. That's true, Rich. Great hanging with you and the lovely wife and kids. And, yeah, it was uh, it was. It's a great atmosphere. I, I think we were talking at the time. It was it was a great atmosphere. I always you know loved going to games at Ole Miss, uh, the energy and everything. But it's just kind of weird that it took place between two teams that didn't have a lot riding on it at the time. I, I, I may, that might change, I guess, in the weeks ahead. But still, great t- place to take in a ball game, man. It was a lot of fun. So the game you saw on Thursday night, Ole Miss won. Mississippi State able to come back and get the back two in the series. So it's yeah. two weekends in a row where they win a series. Uh, a good home series win against Arkansas last week, uh, two weeks ago. They win against Ole Miss two out of three last weekend. This weekend they go to Missouri, and Mississippi State has kind of played it uh, played itself into a spot where they got a chance, but the margin for error is just minuscule. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they're going to be playing some pretty good teams. I mean, I, I think everybody will agree that the. Ole Miss. I'm sorry. The uh, the Missouri series is a, is one that's winnable, maybe even sweepable. That's hard. You can't predict to do that on the road in the SEC, no matter where it is. But those are winnable games. And but after that, it's it just gets tough. Florida, who's kind of playing for their lives because their SEC mark isn't all that crash hot right now. And Texas A&M, speaking of a team that's hot, they seem to be really uh, really heating up. And Tennessee at the end. So those are really tough teams they got coming up. Uh, it's going to be a real struggle because their RPI is not where it needs to be to to get an at-large consideration, obviously, right now, if the season ended now. But I guess that's kind of the way the SEC, it gives you a chance no matter where you're at in the season, and it can also bury you if you don't play your best baseball. Um, and and uh, Mississippi State's kind of got that uh, crossroads ahead of them. Eric, for several years now on Mondays, during baseball season, we talk with with all three head coaches in Mississippi, with Mike Bianco from Ole Miss, with Chris Lamonis from Mississippi State, and with, with Scott Berry from Southern Miss. And so yeah. we are pretty locked in on, on what's happening in Hattiesburg with this Southern Miss team. But the Golden Eagles have kind of forced themselves for the entire country that follows college baseball to take note as they've climbed to number four in the D1 baseball top 25. They're a top 10 RPI team. They're projected not only to be a host but to perhaps be a national seed yeah. What do you see when you look at this Southern Miss team? Oh, man, it's all ahead of them. You're right. They have all these possibilities. Um, and it was great. I, I, I got a chance to see them on Tuesday night at Southeast Louisiana. I Granted, it was just a, a midweek game, but I just kind of just wanted to see what the team was like and what they looked like and talk to Coach Barry afterwards. And, and he was a real confident guy. He really likes this team. I, I think the thing that I – one of the things was I asked him, I said, how is this team doing as far as, like, you know, all those accolades you just brought up, being number four in the country, you know, being a possible national seed even, which is great. And I said, how are they reacting to that as far as, you know, pressure-wise? Are they thinking about it? Is it something that's ever addressed? And he said, he said no, the way this team is – I mean, it's hard to avoid these things, You obviously – but the way this team is, the way they play, they play for each other. There's, he said, there's just no selfishness on that team whatsoever, and that's what he really likes about his uh, Eagles teams. And he says that's what he thinks is going to keep this team going. It's just you know playing hard, hustling, being humble, and playing together. He he said one of the things that Coach Barry said was, you know, you I've seen teams that have just all star players all up and down the lineup or guys that are going to be drafted up high and everything. And if they just don't have that cohesion, if they don't have that unity, it does that that is what helps a lot of teams get through. And sometimes those all star teams that have all these great players just don't pull through because they don't have that kind of unity. And he likes he just likes the makeup of his team. And uh, I think that's one thing that's going to help them moving forward. Now, I mean, the rest of their schedule is not not great as far as uh, going for RPI, but they're they're not. It's not bad either. They're not playing a lot of teams in the two hundreds of the RPI. So I think uh, yeah. Southern Miss. I mean, just looking at them, they they pass the look. I mean, they they pass the eye test. They they look like a guy with like a team with a lot of guys that are just athletic looking, and uh, and I think that's. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Their, their pitching's been great. I mean, Rich, I could go on about these guys. Their pitching's been great. They've barely walked over 100 guys this year, and, you know, we're 40 games in. So they really don't beat themselves, and I think that's one thing Coach Barry really likes about this team.
Yeah, that, that strikeout to walk ratio of like four and a half to one is just kind of off the charts. Hey, I'm curious, did, did yeah. you and Coach Barry both take your hats off and just kind of find some common ground? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have that. We do have that similar hairstyle. I, I accused him of stealing it from me, but uh, no, you know, he, he's uh, he looks good. He's very, very aerodynamic. Both of us. Kevin in Pontotoc says, I got a question for Eric. Do you think that the committee would l- allow a 13 SEC win Mississippi State team in because of their status as reigning national champs to try and defend their title? I think the first thing I'd have to say is where the hell is Pontotoc? Um, Pontotoc is no. uh, about 25 miles east of Oxford. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Hell, I probably drew, uh, drove through there then on my way on this trip I had. Um, now, I, I, it's, you kind of hear it all the time um, from like the, the, the chairman of the NCA selection committee. They'll talk about, you know, when they ask him questions at the end of the selection show. And a lot of times they'll say, you know, no, it's, it's not about the name across the front of your jersey. I mean, we take everybody you know, on their merits on what they did on the field. And and so if that's the case. Yeah, but do I you believe him I, when he says that? Yeah, I used to not. Um, in Back in the old days, I used to not believe him. Maybe I, I, I don't think I do. I mean, I think I do believe him now more than they, more than, uh, they used to be back in the early 2000s. Um, so yes, I'll answer it that way. I think I believe them now more so than it was 15 or 20 years ago. So yeah, uh, Mississippi State's got to get some stuff going on the field. That 80 RPI is just like a bad ward on the nose, man. They got to they got to get rid of that and make it better. So no, I don't think they're going to be given any quarter if uh, if they come up short here during in the regu- down the stretch here in the regular season. What do you think the must have number in terms of SEC wins is where RPI becomes irrelevant? 15. Yeah, I. Th- I think, well, if we look at like LSU last year, did, wouldn't they have 13 wins or something like that and they still got in? I think some of that had to do with uh, <laughs> with pulmonary retiring. That's my personal feelings on that. But yeah, I, I would I would like to see them get to 15. I, I think we've talked in the past a million times about it, Rich, is I, I, I think they should have a thing. If you don't have a winning record in conference or at least 500, you know, sorry, you got to get kicked to the curb. But in this case, I would still think uh, Mississippi State would need, I would say, 15. Yeah, I would be looking at that um, as their minimum. Hey, what do you make of the uh, of the Texas A&M-Vanderbilt series this weekend? That's in Nashville. Vanderbilt's yeah. been just okay. Chris McElvain, the, their starter tonight, has been outstanding. A&M, it yeah. feels like, playing better than anybody thought they were going to play. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Rich, they're really kicking it up because, you know, early in the season, they go and they lose two out of three to Penn, an Ivy League team that hasn't even part, hardly played baseball in two years. So I think they kind of got put on the shelf really early, and I, I, I think that was part of the problem. They, they just had to play through that. I mean, they didn't look great until, like, you know, now, SEC play. SEC play, they're really starting to pick it up, and I think they're just kind of getting used to Jim Schossnagel and the new staff and everybody kind of gelling together and they're kind of doing it at the right time. And I think that was a great thing that you said though. It's like Vanderbilt's good. They're uh, what is it? 28 and 11. I'm looking here. They're good. They're just like normal. Um, but in some ways, but in other ways, you're right. They, they, they haven't looked like they're dominant. They don't look like they're, they, they do look beatable um, just about any yeah, day. Just okay. in and out. Yeah. And so by Vanderbilt standards, that's kind of bad for them because they've been so great over the last few years. So, yeah, I think, well, the other thing you have to take into consideration, Rich, is it's, and, and we talk about this all the time on your show, is, is going on the road in the SEC, going on the road. You talked about it with the Missouri hosting Mississippi State. Mississippi State's going to be up against it. Texas A&M's going to be up against it. tough places to play. You just got that natural, you know, those natural home, adva- home field advantages in the SEC. It's always tough to win on the road. But I do like the way that A&M is playing uh, just recently. I mean, you you went two out of three against Arkansas. You went two out of three against, what was it before? Uh, Georgia, I guess it was before. That's impressive. I mean, they're starting to heat up at the right time. And, and uh, even though they hadn't swept them, these are still very good, solid, uh, solid wins for them. And so I'd, I'd give them a puncher's chance at Vanderbilt because they kind of be hit. They're, they're, they're on an uptick. And this is the time of year when you want to start getting the, your feet under you like that and getting momentum. Other marquee series this weekend, Auburn at Tennessee. That's a top 25 matchup. I wish we had time to get into it. But unfortunately, the commercials will begin whether we stop talking or not. Eric, thanks as always for your time. Great visiting with you. That's Eric Sorensen from D1Baseball.com. Joining us on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team. 
Mississippi Farm Bureau. We will be right back. 